Muckle 9 Part 2, we're still on language here. We just got through talking about uh, the various areas in the brain that um, uh, produce language in the throat and then in the brain. Um, as we're talking about uh, biological anthropology here, I wanted to draw your attention. Uh, if you need um, a, uh, uh, let's see, it's got CASC, it's got uh, uh, FND, Biological Science. Um, it'll get you your Biological Science 4A, uh, CAS D if you're in a CAS major. Uh, uh, this is being offered this summer uh, online. All online anthropology majors cannot take it, uh, but anyone else can. It's Anthropology 255 by our biological anthropologist, Kelsey Ellis, uh, a really, really great uh, uh, teacher. Um, you'll learn about human origins, ancestral hominids, non-human primates, uh, models of human evolution. Here is a, uh, let's see, we're on Instagram. Uh, here we are here. Uh, foundations of Biological Anthropology, from primate behavior to modern human variation, biological anthropology helps us understand what it means to be human. In this class, we focus on how evolution works, investigate how evolution has shaped the behavior of our closest real living relatives, monkeys, apes, and lemurs, and she herself, uh, there she is in the field in Argentina, uh, just across the border from Brazil. Uh, uh, we'll use, uh, studying uh, um, the fuzzy monkeys. Oh, shoot. <laughs> they're very round and fluffy. Um, I don't remember exactly what they're called, but they're very, very cute. Um, let's see. Uh, so we're going to look at the monkeys. Use fossil evidence to unravel the history of the human lineage. Discover the adaptations and variation observed across modern humans today. Uh, of course, in the lab, this is what you would be doing, but she has brought it online. Uh, so consider taking that. There's a little uh, plug for anthropology there. Pardon me. Studying language through the lens of anthropology, what does a linguistic anthropologist do? Uh, uh, linguistic anthropologists discern the logic of other people's realities. Everyone's reality is filtered through uh, their description of it um, using language, and that language is logically um, controlled. It's a very, very systematic um, uh, mathematical process of how language works. Uh, so it's very interesting for that. Uh, so we're going to, uh, as, as linguistic anthropologists, also examine the relationships between language, uh, that is language as communication, uh, between language and cognition, uh, that is between um, uh, communication and thought, and then uh, larger social life. Uh, recording a language, anthropologists are mainly interested in spoken or signed language, not written language. Uh, by the time you've written it down, it's already spoiled. It's gotten too formalized. There's too many rules. It's too connected to... Um, authority and power and the right way to do it, uh, it's lost all of its naturalness. But when we speak still, uh, when we talk, uh, we, we, we have a little more natural uh, 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 inflection and, and pronunciation and the way we put words together is, is a lot more normal uh, than when we start writing it down. The only place that we write that is interesting to anthropologists tends to be texting. Um, texting is genuine and immediate and people do it without being concerned about uh, uh, punctuation and spelling and all that. So um, that's that's really uh, interesting to us. For descriptive linguistics, there are five elements in grammar. When we're talking about grammar as a descriptive linguistics, uh, a descriptive linguist does not talk about grammar and just mean parts of speech or just mean spelling uh, or punctuation as your um, uh, um, grade school or middle school uh, or even high school teacher might have referred to grammar. When we're talking about grammar, we're talking about five elements, phonetics, phonemics, morphology, syntax, and semantics. Um, you don't see spelling in there anywhere. Uh, grammar is much more interesting and bigger than that. So the beginning of grammar is phonetics. This is the study of all sounds that had ever been used by humans in any language. Um, as we know, there are sounds uh, that uh, uh, the uh, uh, people of Southern Africa use, the uh, the Khoisan people uh, with a lot of clicks and, and, and and stuff like that. Um, those are parts of, 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 of language. Uh, many of us have met someone, um, often they're from China um, or East Asia, and we ask them their name and they say, Mew. and we're like, what? <laughs> can I hear that another time? Uh, that's because um, we, uh, 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 anybody 
uh, is only tuned, attuned to pick up on the sounds that they themselves can make. Um, they, uh, we, we, we can't, uh, we, we can't pick up on sounds that, um, uh, we, we, we don't recognize. Um, <clears throat> ah. So there are uh, there are sounds in in um, in um, Welsh. Let's see. I'll get a <clears throat> one of these sounds. Let's get the big picture up here. Hopefully this is not stuck up in the corner. Uh, but if it is, I'll put this up here because sometimes it gets stuck in the corner. For example, ooh, let's see if it's in here still. I write stuff down so much in my wife's uh, notebook here. Let's see this name and this name. Put it up here. Uh, Lloyd and Floyd. Are those the same name in English? No. But in Welsh, yes, it's the same name. In Welsh, is that a Floyd or a Lloyd? All right, we do that's the F sound with your top teeth touching your, uh, let me put this up here, uh, top teeth pushing, uh, uh, pushing on your lower lip, Floyd, um, and then the other one is la, la, with your uh, tongue pushing against the roof of your mouth up there at the front, la, the hard palate, um, la, la, um, and ni neither of these is, is, is how you say Floyd. Uh, in in Welsh, in Welsh, what you do is you flatten your tongue across the top, make it wide, and then touch it to your teeth at the top. So make it wide and flat across the top, like a bar across your your tongue, and then touch it to the teeth on either side, and then blow out. And the air should be coming through your cheeks. You should hear it going through here. Try this at home. Uh, you don't have to do it in the classroom. If you're in the classroom, I'd make you do it in the classroom. Uh, Lloyd. Be careful you don't have any spit in there because it'll just throw spit everywhere. Lloyd. 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 Is there anywhere a... No. Lloyd. Is there anywhere a... La. No. Lloyd. Lloyd. Okay? So that is known as a lateral. Lateral because your tongue is flat across your mouth. Um, and we have a lateral in English. It's called the... Um, lateral r and this is the uh, this is the um the um terminal r terminal r so we have a initial and a medial and terminal r r and then r r so the r the initial r r that's a different sound than the r it's a different part of the mouth completely different sound um we use the same uh symbol um, to refer to it, but it's a different sound. It's like uh, it's like S versus Z, right? Cars, houses, right? The first S is a S, the second S is a Z. Houses. Um, we don't say houses. Well, maybe we do say houses. I say houses. <laughs> but there's two different sounds with a sing uh, a single sign, um, and it's the same with the the initial R versus the terminal R. -r. Okay, so that's a lateral. You feel your tongue. It's pushed up against the sides. Er, right? Okay. Um, and then we have another weird one in English uh, called the uh, uh, a liquid. L-I-Q. These are, these are sort of, uh, they're halfway between consonants and vowels. Nobody's really sure whether they're a consonant or a vowel. Uh, vowels have uh, air passing through, so there's some kind of vowel. Um, but uh, there's something uh, consonantal about them. Consonants, consonants usually stops or, or fricatives where there's um, or right? Either the air stops flowing or it's flowing uh, through a, a very tight aperture. Um, and vowels usually just open ah, e, u, yeah. Uh, so this is somewhere in between these liquid, oh, liquid L. Uh, the term, and this is again the terminal. Terminals are always crazy in English. Terminal L. Um, is uh, 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 not the one that starts. The one that starts has that flap. La, right? Like, lap, um, liquid, right? You got a la in there. Uh, but when you get to the terminal in American English, it goes oh, oh, and there's never a flap at the end. You don't say feel, 
right? That's how a foreigner speaks uh, American English. They say, oh, how do you feel, right? Feel, la, feel. And I'm like, no, 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 feel. They're like, no, 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 there's an L there. You should say it, you know, it's your language. You should learn how to speak your language, feel. And I'm like, no, 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 feel. But what does it stop? It stops when you feel like it should stop. If you have a, a, a sound after it, you say feel like, right? And you flap it. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, you just keep on going. Feel.